What's up guys, this is Voxside and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna be creating this nice icing and uh, freezing effect. So let's get started right away. I will create a new project, don't save, and let's create a new composition. And this will be full HD, frame rate of uh, 30, and let's go for a 10 second duration and it should be fine. I will go ahead now and uh, import my logo, so if you double click in this window over here, you can go ahead and search for your logo. And uh, now with my logo imported, I can drag this layer inside the comp and let's rename this to composition, let's rename this to main comp. And uh, you can see that this logo has alpha transparency, which is very important. So make sure your logo has transparency. And I can go ahead and now pre-compose this layer. So control shift C and I will name this logo holder. And uh, since this is now pre-composed, we can always go back and change our logo and our effect will remain intact. I'll go ahead and uh, control Y to create a new solid. Let's make this solid white and I'll hit OK and I will go to effect transition and let's choose linear wipe. Let's animate this linear white from uh, 100%. So I'll make a keyframe for transition completion. Let's move over maybe to let's say around the seven second mark and let's use a value of uh, 0% here. And if I press U to show my keyframe information, you can see that this creates this nice transition and I can adjust this transition now. So let's give this an angle and this should be fine for now. And let's also pre-compose this layer. So control shift C and I will name this transition and uh, underscore main. All right. So now I can uh, pre-compose this layer again. So I want to create a new pre-composition. So control shift C and let's rename this to transition this place. All right, and hit OK. And let's step inside this transition displays uh, composition. And here we have our transition main layer. And I want to add some effects on this layer. So let's go to effect distort and let's start with a turbulent displays. And I will increase the size maybe or rather or uh, rather decrease the size and maybe increase the amount. And you can already see we're starting to get that uh, nice sort of uh, organic detail to our transition. Let's go ahead and go to effect and add a stylize and let's choose rough and edges. Let's increase the border for this and I can zoom in here to see what's going on. And maybe decrease the scale, add more detail and this should be fine. And now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this uh, rough and edges layer. So control D. Let's set the edge type for our second duplicate to spiky. And maybe also decrease the scale for this guy and you can kind of see the effect we're getting here and maybe let's go back to our turbulent displays and decrease the size a bit let's try maybe a value of 15 and i can increase the amount let's try a higher value so maybe 21 and you can play around with these settings until you get a satisfying result but this should uh, do the trick for now let's go back in our main comp all right, and uh, let's duplicate this logo holder layer. So control D. And now if I set this uh, duplicate to be Luma matte for our transition displace layer. And uh, if I set this to add, now you can see, uh, let's actually just solo this layer. So now this uh, second duplicate of our logo holder is looking at the layer above it. In this case, our transition displace layer, and it's using this uh, layer above it as a mask. All right, so, so far so good. Let's unsolo this. And I will duplicate this uh, transition displace layer and let's place this duplicate below our second logo holder. So in between our logo holder layers, let's set this logo holder now to Luma inverted mat. And uh, if I solo this, now you can see it's creating the same effect only in reverse. So now when I put these layers together and uh, let's uh, go ahead and add a, let's add a tin to this. And let's even add a uh, curves just so you can see this effect better. So you can kind of see what's going on over here. Now I have a layer that will be our icing and uh, the layer below it will just uh, slowly fade out uh, using the transition displace layer. All right. And let's get rid of these effects now and uh, unsolo these. So I'm going to go ahead and for this layer, 
let's set this back to normal you can see there's a gap in between our layers here and that's fine let's go ahead and for our second logo holder let's add a stylized CC glass all right and if I go in my surface here you can see that you can use a bump map and uh, let's create our bump map I will go to my project window and uh, I, I will grab my transition main and uh, set this into inside a uh, new composition and uh, this composition I will rename to Transition CC Glass. All right. So it's just uh, for now. It's just our initial uh, transition layer. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. And uh, let's see. For this adjustment layer, I want to add a. Let's go ahead and add a fractal noise. All right. So it's just adding a fractal noise to our. Uh, layer and since uh, there's actually nothing here it only adds it to our white solid and then i can go ahead and go to my blur and sharpen and add a fast blur to this and i'm just going to blur this out and uh, turn on repeat edge uh, pixels just blur this out and maybe then i can increase the contrast and maybe increase the scale or actually i'm just going to set this fractal noise to be below our fast blur all right so i don't really want to blur out my fractal noise i just want to create this feather here in the middle and uh, let's go back in our project window and i'm just gonna drop a logo holder so i'm gonna drop my logo holder composition here and i'm gonna go ahead and go to generate and uh, choose fill and use a white color for this and hit OK and now I can use this layer as a mask for our transition below it and I can do this by setting this layer to be stencil Luma so you can now uh, you can now see the effect that's uh, taking place I'm also gonna pre-compose all of these layers so control shift C and I don't really care about this name I'm just gonna leave it as pre-comp 1 hit OK and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a new solid and this solid I'm gonna make 100% black all right, and uh, let's place this layer below our pre-comp. So previously, if I turn off this black solid layer, you can see that we have a transparency going on and I don't want that. So that's the reason I'm creating this black solid because if I go back in our main comp for our, uh, let's see, our logo holder inside our CC glass, I'm gonna drop my, let's see, our transition CC glass comp and I will hide this. And uh, let's set the logo holder. So let's set the bump map for our CC glass to be this new layer. So transition CC glass. And I'm just going to leave this uh, property to lightness. And I'm going to go ahead and just increase the height a bit. Maybe the softness. And now you can see the scale of our layers don't really match. You can see it's our eyes will be growing outside of the layer bounds and an easy fix that you can do for this is you can grab this transition CC glass layer and just move it over a bit and basically just delay its uh, impact all right and you can see now that uh, we have a nice gradual effect all right so now I'm gonna pre-compose these uh, three layers and uh, hit ctrl shift C and let's rename this to logo underscore displaced all right and uh, if I solo this layer now you can see what we have and I can sort of use this layer now as a mask for our uh, ice texture I guess and I'll show you what I mean if I create a new solid and uh, let's name this to ice texture one and hit OK and let's go ahead and create our, our ice texture and I'm going to go ahead and go to noise and grain, fractal noise and uh, let's decrease the scale for this to 50 maybe and let's go ahead and go to blur and sharpen and choose a vector blur and now if I increase the amount let's give it a nice value here and I'm just uh, sort of increasing the value until something that sort of looks like ice starts uh, showing up and now I can simply go to my effect and add a tritone for some easy color correcting. And let's change the midtones to a blue. All right, and uh, let's see what we can do now. So I can uh, go ahead and duplicate this local displaced layer. So Control D, 
let's set this duplicate on top of our ice texture and if I go ahead and add a generate fill and set the fill to white I can now set this ice texture layer to be luma matte for our logo displace layer and you can see now that our ice uh, texture is perfectly aligned with our transition and I can go ahead and set this to add and uh, let's actually go to our first logo displace layer and let's add a let's see let's add the curves to this and just increase the contrast here maybe solo this and see exactly what we are doing maybe decrease the brightness so something like this and if I unsolo this all right so now we're starting to create our original effect I'm gonna go ahead and grab both of these layers and duplicate these and let's re rename this to ice texture 2 and I will solo this and for this guy I will uh, let's decrease the amount for our vector blur to maybe 15 and let's go to our transform and let's set the scale to be maybe 15 as well all right so this will be our second uh, texture layer that will just add an extra bit of uh, detail and uh, maybe i can set the scale even smaller and maybe if i set the vector blur even small as well and uh, this should be fine and if i unsolo this and uh, since the details are getting clamped together uh, there's not really much you can tell and uh, let's solo this again and what I can do here is actually I will uh, get rid of this tritone and I will go ahead and go to my noise and grind and add another layer of uh, fractional noise to this layer so this will be added to our ice texture 2 layer and if I set this fractional noise the second fractional noise let's set the blending mode to multiply and uh, now you can see that as I increase this uh, the brightness uh, value and maybe increase some contrast now you can see that I'm breaking up the original uh, fractal pattern and uh, now if I unsolo this you can see that it's creating a much more uh, toned down effect so uh, you can see that uh, as I hide this layer what happens and I can also go ahead and add a tritone to this now and set the tritone maybe to a uh, more saturated uh, blue and let's solo this and maybe I can even let's go to glow and add some glow to this as well let's decrease the threshold and increase the radius and maybe let's get rid of some of the complexity for our second fractional noise and uh, maybe even decrease the brightness a bit so now I'm just using the second layer to add a bit more uh, detail to our eyes Let's grab our transition displace layer and I will place this composition inside a new composition and that creates a new composition and this composition I'm going to rename it to transition edges. So here I have only my normal transition displace layer and I'm going to go ahead and add the adjustment layer to this uh, composition and for this adjustment layer I'm going to go ahead and add a stylize and let's go with uh, fine edges. I'll set the fine edges to invert and I'm also going to drop a logo holder comp inside this uh, composition and I'm going to do the same thing as we did earlier let's uh, use a fill for this and then if I set this layer to stencil luma this will filter out our uh, edges only to take place where our logo is all right let's go back in our main comp and let's drop our transition edges comp inside this uh, main comp and uh, let's see what we can do with this guy if I set this guy to add uh, you can already kind of see what this is doing uh, and only a couple of effects I'm gonna add here uh, so let's solo this layer and let's add a noise and grain fractional noise I will set the blending mode for this to be multiply and maybe decrease the brightness a bit and increase the contrast and maybe even increase or rather decrease the scale so I'm just again using a fractional noise to sort of break out our pattern let's also add a curves to this and increase the contrast here and maybe I can go ahead and add a tritone and set our midtones to a nice blue so this will be a very saturated blue and also add a stylized effect glow and maybe I will duplicate this glow and for my second duplicate I'm just going to increase the glow radius and maybe decrease the threshold a bit 
So now if I unsolo this layer now, you can kind of see what this layer creates. And uh, maybe if I set the triton to a lighter blue, now we can get a little bit more uh, white and uh, separation from our from from sort of the rest of the ice. So this is pretty much the gist of this effect. Only thing left now is to add a nice background. So Control Y for uh, white for a new solid. Let's place this below and let's add a generate uh, ramp. And let's go ahead and for our end color, let's choose a nice blue. And I will also go ahead and uh, again, I will use a fractal noise and set this to multiply. Let's actually set this to soft light and let's decrease the contrast to maybe 15%. And uh, let's increase the scale here and just go ahead and add a blur to this and uh, turn on repeat edge pixels and just increase the blur. And as I increase the contrast, you can uh, sort of affect the intensity of our fractional noise. And this will just break out, uh, break up our pattern a bit for our ramp. And uh, the cool thing about this effect is if I go in my project window here and uh, if I go to my transition main, and uh, let's just go to our layer and uh, let's change the angle maybe uh, maybe to 180 degrees. And so this is the transition now and go back in my main comp. You can see that we are getting a completely different look and result and everything is procedural. So uh, you can go ahead and create a lot of uh, different uh, type of transitions uh, like this. And you can also, for example, if I get rid of this linear wipe or just set this to be invisible, I can go ahead and uh, add an ellipse. Uh, let's actually add this uh, mask. So I'll double click to add a mask. And uh, if I, let's animate this mask. So I will set the keyframe for uh, our mask to be outside of our bounds for our layer and just, and, uh, just add another keyframe at the beginning of our timeline and sort of create a linear uh, animation transition type and maybe something like this you can refine this uh, for it to be uh, perfect and uh, let's go inside our main comp and take a look you can see that this takes the shape of our layer and uh, yeah you can create a lot of uh, different uh, effects with uh, this setup now and you can also of course go ahead and in your uh, logo holder comp, you can uh, change your logo here. So maybe just uh, drop a text. And you can uh, take a look in the main comp now. And you can see that uh, everything uh, works perfectly. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Make sure to drop a like if you learned anything new. Subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials. And I'm out.